We have been talking for two weeks. I'm not sure that you know what my last name is. And you are on FaceTime with me telling me that this Daniel Caesar song about a long-term in love relationship reminds you of me. He's just sitting there literally, like all jokes aside guys, we're not having a conversation. He is singing love songs. And in between every song, this song reminds me of you. Like, wh uh, bro, what's my favorite color? You literally don't know. And this nimwit comes into my job. This absolute imbecile. I know you wanna, girl, I know you wanna. Hey guys, it's Naira. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, what's up? So I had a few video ideas and I posted asking which ones of the ideas that I had you guys wanted to see. And consistently y'all want to see this the most because y'all are messy. Just like me. Let's get into it. This is going to be a story time about this boy that I used to talk to. So weird, so messy. Let's get into it. Um, I, it's a hot mess, okay? Like, I just wanna jump into the story, it's a mess. So, of course we're gonna be giving homeboy um, a fake name. Let's call him James, yeah, James. We'll call him James. So, James and I initially went to high school together, but we did not graduate together. James switched schools and graduated elsewhere, and I remained at that same school but I ended up moving out of the area of said high school. So, oh my God, why are my brows so bad that way? Oh my goodness, what the heck? So, um, shortly before I graduated, I moved away from the area of my high school. I lived in a different part of Maryland. So, James had apparently also moved to this part of Maryland, saw on social media after, after we had both graduated already, Saw on social media that we both now lived in the same part of Maryland. He just hit me up and was like, oh, hey, we both live out here now. Like maybe we should link, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I really didn't know him very well. We didn't know each other very well, but he, um, you know, he slid in my DM. Before I ever like just go link up with somebody, and like obviously I knew him in real life, like we went to school together, but I know him like that. Before I go link up with somebody, like I'm not just gonna like hang out with you and get to know you. Like I'm the type where like I need to like text you and talk to you for a while before I just link up with you because if your energy is off or I like don't like the way that you talk to me or you know, just whatever. Not even just on a relationship standpoint, but just like friendships or just anything. I need to fill you out before I commit to hanging out with you for an extended period of time or even a short period of time to avoid hurting your feelings because I'm not somebody that's willing to like just fake it and just get through it. Like if I was to just link up with him and like the energy was off, I would be straight up and be like, yeah, I'm feeling this. I'm gonna head out, you know? So to waste no one's time, not mine or not his, we just text for a little bit. I'm like, mm, we can't really link up, but you know, we can talk for a little bit. We start texting um, and everything is, no we had only talked for a total of maybe three weeks. Everything's normal at first. We are just catching up. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You know, whatever. Um, this is also, FYI, way, way back. This is like around the time I had graduated high school so we're just talking you know catching up nothing special we still don't meet up mostly because of me <laughs> i just don't want to and if i don't want to i'm not gonna do it but we're texting everything is normal we graduate from texting to facetime each other which is somewhat a big deal for me because if I'm gonna like be on FaceTime and like talking to you, like I've gotta be somewhat comfortable. So after texting for maybe about a solid week, we start to FaceTime one another. So we would FaceTime and everything was normal. But of course, if everything stayed normal, this wouldn't be my video <laughs> and this wouldn't be my story time. So he has kind of asked me out on dates. Like I said, I really decline. Oh, I'm busy or I work or I'm very straightforward. So if I wasn't busy and I didn't work and I just didn't want to go, I would, I'll would. i just say, hmm, not really feeling that, but thank you. Um, Cause I hadn't completely felt him out yet. Like I'm not just gonna jump at the idea to go on a date with you. So 
he has the bright idea. Instead of continuing to ask homegirl on a date, I'm gonna ask her to come over to my house. Boy, if you don't. Hmm. And it started off very lighthearted, you know? Oh, you should come over, we can watch this. Nah, I'm good, thanks. You should come over, we can hang out, we can do this, we can, nah, I'm good, thanks. If, I, if I'm if i not going to let you take me on a date and give me free food and entertainment, what makes you think I'm willing to just come sit at your house? And, and no, no, okay, no, because no. Now let's be clear, the problem isn't that he was inviting me over, but more so the fact that he felt comfortable inviting me to his house before he had been given the green light to take me on a real date. Um, like I said, I'm very straightforward. I don't come off as the girl who you can just invite over to your house and then something's gonna happen and and you, like, no. I, no, because no. Nah, it just isn't me. And I, may, I thought that was pretty apparent but hey, maybe not to him. Maybe he's like, oh, she just doesn't want to go out. She just wants to come over. <laughs> so I get really turned off by this and I kind of stopped talking to him. I just stopped talking to him really, or not completely, but I just like talk to him less and less. Like I'm, I just like fall back because I didn't like that. And so he, he takes the hint and he chills out. Um, he takes the hint and he chills out. But then, and this is a consistent problem in my life. I don't know why people ever feel so comfortable, but they do. Homeboy starts asking for money to take the bus. Hey, can I borrow some? Remind you, we have not gone on a date yet. We we went to, we used to go to high school together and we are in the talking stage. So weird, um, but whatever. Um, he's like, he, can I borrow a few dollars to like catch the Metro? And I'm like, bro, oh my God. He asked me this like twice and I said, no, I'm not about to give you money because like, what? are you kidding me? Like, you don't even know me like that. Like not only that, but I hate that people always feel so comfortable asking me for money because it's like, why do, why do I look like a sugar daddy to people? I don't get it. People think that because I'm nice and they know me that they're like entitled. That's the that's the thing about it is like, I don't know. I've, I've always had this problem and I still do to this day. People around me, long term, short term, whatever, always feel entitled to what I got. No, not gonna happen. Yeah, homeboy starts asking me for money to catch the Metro. Bro, no. I tell him no twice. Everything goes back to normal. He stopped asking me for stuff. Cool, right? Now, in between the these little red flags, things are cool with us. Um, he was sweet and, you know, whatever. Um, he pretended like he had good sense, so um, I continued to entertain him for the most part. But now, he comes back with the clownery. So now, when we FaceTime, anytime I FaceTime him, he is just conveniently in the mood to listen to love songs. Um... Okay, here's the thing. That is corny. Um, I, I don't know how else to put it. We have been talking for two weeks. I'm not sure that you know what my last name is. And you are on FaceTime with me telling me that this Daniel Caesar song about a long-term in love relationship reminds you of me. And I distinctly remember thinking to myself, like the first time that this happened, like, oh, don't be so pessimistic. Like he's just trying to be sweet, like, you know, whatever. So the first time I like laugh it off, ha ha, that's cute. It doesn't stop though, to the point where I hang up the FaceTime call because he's just sitting there literally, like all jokes aside guys, we're not having a conversation. He is singing love songs. And in between every song, this song reminds me of you. Like, uh, bro. What's my favorite color? You literally don't know. So the first time I tried to laugh it off, couldn't really laugh it off, so I hung up FaceTime. The second time this happens, we were on FaceTime for a little bit already. And then, like we were, we were talking and just having a normal conversation. And then he starts doing the same thing. And I'm like, 
I remember at one point I was so annoyed by it. It was like some Chris Brown song and I was like, I don't even like Chris Brown, so. <laughs> it's so funny because I'm like so blunt, I can't even help it, but I was like, I don't even like Chris Brown. I don't remember if it was a second or a third time that made me say, okay, I'm not FaceTiming him anymore, but I just know it was, it was either a second or, it probably was a second, my tolerance is pretty low. Um, so after that, I was like, nah, yeah, we just can't FaceTime no more. Um, so we end up planning a date, like an actual date, not come over. He was like, okay, let me take you to eat. Uh, I want to say it was Cheesecake Factory. I want to say Cheesecake Factory. But I had worked that day and we were going to go when I got off work. And it was just too much. He was going to take his grandma's car to come pick me up. And then he could, that's not, that's not the problem. But like, just to be clear, um, everybody has been in a situation where they don't have a car or they, you know, that like they lack something. Just to be very clear, I'm not that shallow. Um, that is not the problem. So he was going to take his grandma's car to come pick me up, but then he couldn't use it anymore. So he's like, okay, you can just Uber to the restaurant and I'll cash up you the money, like I'll pay for the Uber. It, it just became complicated. When something gets complicated, like if making plans becomes like overwhelming or complicated for me, I just don't go. That's not even a date thing. That's just like in general, if it becomes an ordeal or like a point of like stress or like unnecessary planning to go do something, I'm not gonna do it, period. That's just, I've always been that way, really. It's just who I am. And I was tired from work. Nah, nah that's okay. We'll go out another time. He didn't make it a big deal. He was like, okay, you know, sorry, it didn't really work out for you today. And he's like, um, I'll order you food. So I'm like, oh, that's sweet, you know? So now that situation, the fact that he had finally gotten back um, his good sense and he was like, okay, this girl's not just gonna come over to my house and let me touch her. So we don't go out but he was sweet enough to get me food and I appreciated that. And he didn't make it a big deal, didn't try to guilt trip me. Y'all know men do that. Well, no, not men, boys. Y'all know boys do that. They be trying to like guilt trip you if you don't wanna go do something with them. Like, boy, let's start here. I don't owe you nothing. I don't, I don't even owe you a text back. You're lucky. Anywho, he didn't try to guilt trip me, didn't try to make me feel bad. Um, and I really appreciated that. And then he ordered me food because he was like, I still wanna give you dinner. So uh, at this point, he was all the way back in my good graces, right? A few days maybe passed by, we're talking, everything's normal. Then here we go again. Can you send me some money so I can catch the bus to work? No, James, I can't send you money to catch the bus for work. Just like I couldn't send you money to catch the bus for work last week. Okay, no, I can't do it. So now he's like, I did something for you. I bought you food, I ain't even have to do that. I ain't even have to do all that, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know what? You didn't. That was my exact response to him. You know what? You didn't. Blocked his number. Blocked! Because what you're not gonna do is feel so entitled that you're gonna tell me I did something to you for you, so now you have to do something for me absolutely not gonna happen and not only that but the entitlement runs so deep that before you had ever even done any favors for me you expected money from me anyway like where do you get off sir but yeah this idiot this absolute nimwit so entitled so i block his number because no you're not about to stress me out you're not about to raise my blood pressure. I just won't deal with you. Like, it's that simple and it's that easy. Um, I 100% believe in not having relationship issues with someone you're not in a relationship with, period. Guys, now here is where things get messy. Here's where things get messy. So I had previously, we had talked about our jobs. I had previously told him where I worked. He had told me where he had worked, right? But when you tell somebody where you work, you don't tell them with the intention of them coming to your job. You know, it's like, I didn't tell you where I work so you can harass me. 
I told you because we were getting to know each other, but okay, all right. Um, I guess you were confused, okay? Y'all see where this is going. Y'all y'all know, y'all y'all see where I'm going with this, right? See, I was gonna say this man, but no. This absolute adult boy comes to my job. Now, when we had the where do you work conversation, um, I told him where I worked. I, I'm an optician. People ask me what I do a lot in my comments, and it's funny because I feel like I say this pretty frequently, but I'm an optician. I work with contacts and glasses at a doctor's office. Boom, that's my job. When I told him where I worked, he was like, oh, I come to get my glasses there. And I'm like, oh, cool. Um, I was fairly new, so I had never seen him there, but he's just like, you know, you go get your eyes checked once a year if you have bad vision like me. Um, you go to get your eyes checked once a year typically. So he's like, when I go to get my eyes checked, that's where I go. I'm like, cool, didn't think much of it. Y'all, I'm sitting at work, minding my business, and this nimwit comes into my job. This absolute imbecile shows up at my, now remind you, this is post block. You are blocked, sir, and you know by this point that I have blocked your number. What gave you the nerve, the audacity, and the balls to walk up in here? Um, not only is this like, ridiculously inappropriate because I'm at my place of business and you decided to just show up to purposely make me uncomfortable. But, um, but no, okay, no. I feel like I shouldn't have to explain why this was upsetting. Um, I am the queen at being passive aggressive when it's needed. I don't like to be mean or whatever, but like, no. You feel so entitled that you felt entitled to me giving you something you did a favor with with something in return in mind. Um, you felt entitled to my money before you even did me a favor. And now you're trying to force me to interact with you. Oh, I'm about to be passive aggressive like a mofo and I will be directly aggressive if I wasn't at work. So you lucky you caught me on the clock because you don't want to see the real me. So of course he comes in and he doesn't want help from anyone else. He comes right over to me, right? So I look at homeboy and I'm like, how can I help you? Like, I don't even know him. I'm like, how can I help you? Because I blocked you. Like once I blocked you, I stopped my association with you. Like you don't get to try to come and hash out your unfinished business. That's my finished business, especially when you were in the wrong. He's kind of looking at me like, oh word. And I'm looking back like, oh word. And so now he's pretending like he actually needs help because he doesn't know what else to do. <laughs> like, you, did you not plan on getting this far, sir? You made your way over here. You didn't plan on getting this far. You Now you just don't know what to say. So now he, like this absolute dummy pretends like he actually needs help with something. Um, he has his glasses on and they are in perfectly fine condition. And he goes, um, I wanna use the warranty on my glasses. I was like, Sure, <laughs> let's play this game. I'm at work, so might as well do something while I'm here, right? You want your warranty on your glasses done? Let's remake your glasses, sure. So I pull up his glasses and he doesn't even have a warranty on them. <laughs> doesn't even have a warranty on them. So I'm like, bro, what? Um, he either didn't have a warranty or his warranty was expired. I think it might've been expired, but I don't remember. But he's like, I need my glasses fixed. Uh, I need, I'm, I'm gonna use my warranty. I, I wish I could remember if it was expired or if he didn't have one. Either way, I tell him, uh, either you don't have a warranty or your warranty's expired, whatever. And he's like, oh, okay, well, how you doing? How do you think I'm doing? You're forcing me to interact with you after you've acted extremely entitled and ridiculous towards me. Not only that, you come here to my place of business to force me into not giving you a genuine reaction. Okay, how do you think I feel? Now, here's where it gets deep. He had not even been in the store for maybe, like legit less than five whole minutes. And then in comes an older woman that was with him. And she's like, James was taking you so long. And I'm like, what the heck? 
I put two and two together. He had told me he lived with his grandma and he was gonna be taking his grandma's car to come pick me up. I'm like, this must, this must be his grandma. So he's like, oh, nothing, I'll be out in a minute. But then she sees somebody, one of my coworkers that worked at the front desk that she knew. So they start talking. Oh my goodness, I haven't seen you so long. I miss you, how are you? You know, how's your family, blah, blah, blah. Apparently they knew each other very well. So they start talking at the front desk and less than less than 60 seconds into the conversation, she's revealing to my coworker at the front desk that James has a baby, but it gets deeper. Not only does he have a baby, not only does he have a baby, because that would be too simple, right? That would be too excusable. He has a baby that he's denying. Oh, wow, father of the year. Beautiful. When she says to my coworker at the front desk, yeah, and would you believe James has a baby and he's trying, she's saying this out loud. He's trying not to take care of that little baby. That baby looked just like him. And he talking about until he gets a DNA test, he's not doing nothing. I said, look at that baby. That baby looks just like you, that's your baby. Now he is sitting like a, a good few feet away from his grandmother. And instead of getting up and walking, like getting up and leaving my desk and walking over to his grandmother, they get into a bit of a screaming match. Um, I told you already, stop telling people that. That's not my baby. So now I'm sitting there like, and she literally, I, you know what, I said they got into a screaming match. That's not really true because she didn't respond. She did not hear him. Well, she heard him, but she didn't react one bit. She didn't give a darn what he had to say about it. She continued to just put his business out there. She is pulling up pictures of the baby. Like seriously guys, she's pulling up pictures of the baby. She's saying that she's in touch with the alleged baby mama and that she said that it has to be his and all this stuff and James is not happy. James gets up and storms out. I'm nosy, so I sit there and I continue to um, very incognito, you know, very incognito, very sneaky, like very stealth-like. I continue to take in all the tea because I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to tell my mama this later. Um, and yeah, it, it was, it was pretty much what she said it was. He had gotten someone pregnant doesn't want to claim the child. They were in a relationship and she's like, you're the only person I've been with. He's like, until you get a DNA test, I ain't doing nothing for you or that baby. And I ain't paying for the DNA test. Like, and I'm like, dang, I was almost involved with that. Really? Toxic men are a lot like roaches in the sense that they're very hard to get rid of. Um, you've really got to put some, some effort and some elbow grease into getting rid of toxic men. Uh, toxic women too, but like toxic men really just take the cake. Like you have got to work to get toxic men out of your life. It's like they just, they keep coming back. And so what did he do? Started texting me from new numbers. I can explain, it's not what it looks like. That's not my baby, that girl's lying. She wants money from me. And I just block the little numbers he's texting me from. And eventually, and by eventually, I mean like maybe a month later, they stop. Thank God. But let's break this down right now, okay? Let's make sure that we're taking the right message from this video. The problem is not whether or not he had children. No, 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 no. Whether, first of all, you are allowed as a woman or as a man to say, I don't feel like I want to date someone that has children like you're allowed to do that let's be clear on that that's a preference you are allowed to have period and for me especially at this point in my life i don't think that's a deal breaker for me that's not the problem the problem with the s plural let's start from the beginning you before you even knew me like that i just because you have access to me does not mean you know me we may maybe maybe have one class together does not mean that you knew me. Just because I allow you to contact me does not mean that you know me, okay? And knowing me does not give you access or entitlement to what I possess. Like, are you dumb? Are you stupid? Are you crazy? 
pick one you can pick and remember this is 18 year old naira we're talking about 20 year old naira would have blocked him uh pretty much the first time he even hinted at asking me for money before we had established a actual legitimate relationship and i don't mean like before you ask me for money we have to be like a committed relationship like i'm your girlfriend you're my boyfriend but like we don't even have a foundation laid out for that and you already are asking me for something that's not okay like we've never hung out we've we, we've never we've never done anything like you've never taken me out anywhere we don't even talk like that like i don't know that just rubs me the wrong way and it's allowed to so the entitlement of asking me for money in the first place was a problem then the whole what well, i did something for you and now it's absurd to me that you won't do something back for me like ridiculous um and I understand that you should be there for people in the way that they're there for you. But like, that was something that was supposed to be like, oh, out of the kindness of my heart, like to be nice, I'm gonna send you some food for dinner since I was supposed to take you out, blah, blah, blah. Like, where do you get off telling me like, basically trying to say like, I owe you because you did something for me. Like, if I do somebody a favor, I don't expect anything in return. I give with no strings attached and I'm never gonna be with somebody who can't do the same then the whole maybe you should come over to my house before i ever even have to take you out on a real date and treat you like i got some sense like also 20 year old naira would have blocked him because of that um and then the cherry on top of the cake is you trying to force your way back into my life like i owe you something and then showing up at my place of business when you know that i can't like give you a genuine response a genuine unfiltered reaction you're trying to like f like that's just toxic to me like you're trying to force me to react a certain way to protect your own ego like what are you are you dumb the answer in this case is yes he very obviously is dumb and then let me let me give you ladies a word the problem is not whether or not a man has a child the problem is how he feels and more importantly how he acts about the fact that he was bold enough to bring a life into this world. A man that does not love his children or even care about his children, a man that does not care about his own flesh and blood that he helped create and bring into this world, what makes you think that he is going to do right by you? Please let that sink in, homegirl. Real quick, I forgot to mention this part too. Like another problem with this is like, tell me what's going on like if that's what you think is going on like you don't think that's your kid or like for whatever reason you are not willing to be there like i am a very understanding person and i'm open about that like it says a lot about your maturity that you can't just be up front like look hey before we really start messing with each other like this is what's going on in my life you know what i mean like he wasn't even mature enough to be upfront and direct about it. And it's like, if it's something that you have to hide or that you're not forthcoming about, then like, that's a problem right there. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. Leave me a like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that, all that influencer stuff. Boring. I want to know what you guys thought about this ghetto situation. Woo child, the ghetto. Um, let me know down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let's have a conversation about it. I will see you on my next video. Bye. Oh, yeah. She say I'm a sweeter man, but she said that she don't need a man. What if we make an agreement then we can just while we're being friends, girl? I know you want it. I know you want it, girl. I know you want.